The fasting doesn't only benefit you in one way that, okay, fine, I'm fasting, so I'm not taking any food inside. But no, your butyric acid levels go up, your ketones go up, your brain changes. It gets neuroplasticity and brain derived neurotropic factors. So enough of this chemistry, physiology, biochemistry, everything else. What can I do today to improve my gut bacteria so that my gut lining is also better, so that I have less inflammation in my body, so that I will not get the diseases of modern man. Modern man from the industrialization. Since then, this is all happened. These are all new acquired diseases that we are now looking at. And it's our lifestyle. And this next portion, I'm gonna talk about your lifestyle, which includes the microbiome, because it's all one big ecosystem in your body. So let's just dive right into it. What do I do practically with my patients? Of course, I take the full history, exam, everything else, but what's my final advice? Number one, fasting. Why do I tell them to fast? What's that got to do with the microbiome? Well, when you fast, guess what happens to the bad guys in your gut? They have nothing to eat. And I told you, their half-life is really short. So they start dying off. So their population goes down. The good guys, their population stays good. In fact, it gets even better because the body wants to preserve those and produces chemicals to actually feed those bacteria. So there's a dramatic change in fasting in the bacterial flora. This has been shown over and over again. The fasting doesn't only benefit you in one way that, okay, fine, I'm fasting, so I'm not taking any food inside. But no, your butyric acid levels go up, your ketones go up, your brain changes. It gets neuroplasticity and brain derived neurotropic factors. But some of the ketones ketosis and the changes in the biochemistry it actually changes your gut flora as well. So it's a, it's it's very interesting that it's all linked in. So fasting does improve your gut flora. One, in fact, if you look at hibernating animals, when they are fasting in that, in that state, there's a huge change in the microbiome that occurs. The microbiome changes in people who get gastric bypass. And we think that, oh, gastric bypass, they're just eating less and eating small amounts. But no, we now know that most, most of the changes, the beneficial changes, Changes that are occurring after gastric bypass surgery is as a result of the microbiome changing. Changes completely. It's drastic change. That's how you get reversal of diabetes and obesity and, and all the other conditions associated with morbid obesity. And talk about obesity, I just want to throw in two points. If your BMI is over 40, you've just lost seven years of your life. If your BMI is over 50, you've just lost 14 years of your life. This is not to be taken, taken lightly. Obesity is just a phenotype of something that may be going on inside your body. It's not just, oh yeah, I'm obese. There are some patients that are obese, yes, and there's no inflammation in the body. When you look at the livers, and they don't have fatty liver, they don't have inflammatory markers, they don't have small dense LDL, they don't have atherosclerosis. And if I did a biopsy of their fat, it probably is not full of uh, immunocytes. They're the minority. So we kind of look at this in more serious. Obesity is not to be taken lightly. Not to be, if you want a functional long life, then get your BMI down to normal. This is very important. So intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding. Remember, your microbiome also has a circadian pattern. So if you're eating every two hours, you've shown no respect for the circadian pattern of your microbiome. So therefore, that microbiome is going to be stressed out. You're going to have the wrong kind. And that's been shown over and over again. You eat every two, three hours, and you're going to have a different type of microbiome than if you do time-restricted feeding. Because teleologically, through evolution also, you were not supposed to be eating every few hours. Go look at my previous videos on, on, on fasting to be convinced. You you got to do time restricted feeding. Next one is sleep. Now, what's sleep got to do with the bacteria? Do the bacteria need sleep? Answer is yes, they have a circadian pattern as well. And sleep will change your autonomic condition, will give you sleepy, uh, uh, leaky gut. So, one night of no sleep, bad sleep, increases LPS levels in your blood. Bad sleep patterns are inflammatory. There's no doubt about it. We know that there's increased sympathetic output from the brain. As far as the gut is concerned, you do get leaky gut. So, you got, you really have to repair the the gut lining. To do that, seven hours of good sleep. If you're not waking up in the morning feeling refreshed, there's something wrong with your sleep. You need to go see a good sleep physician. Now, that doesn't mean you have obstructive sleep apnea only. Sleep hygiene is important. Sleep apnea simply means that, okay, you, you're choking at night because of your increased body mass or maybe your, your turbinates are all blocked and you've got nasal congestion at night. And by the way, this is happening in kids too. Huge problems with sleep. Why? Because their guts are leaking and therefore they're getting inflammation 
they get a mucosal thickening, their mouth breathing. As a result, there's inflammation, there's a difference between nose breathing and mouth breathing. Mouth breathing causes inflammation, inflammatory markers go up. So these kids are becoming inflamed and they're getting obstructive sleep apnea at night because they, they, their noses are getting blocked, the congestion. That's why they get so much infection in their ears as well. So if you get a child that constantly nose is blocked, get it checked out and get over them. Do not accept mouth breathing. It affects their sleep patterns at night. It's going to affect their learning. And remember, there's a, there's a phase that you go through. If you don't learn it now, you know, it's going to be very hard to learn later on. It's lost years. Sleep is not to be taken lightly, especially in children. So in adults, of course, it's very important too. If you have sleep apnea due to obesity or due to structural problems, you can take care of it. You can even sleep with a mask temporarily. But of course, the real, the real treatment for obstructive sleep apnea in adults is weight loss, dietary changes. But your sleep hygiene is important. Watching, watching blue light at night decreases the quality of your deep sleep as well. So, you know, you need to start dimming the lights and, and you need to you need to allow your body to get into that restful state before you go to bed. Stress management, stress management. Can stress increase gut leakiness and inflammation and inflammatory markers such as LPS? And the answer is a resounding yes. So you just have one bad stressful day. You've just had a bunch of LPS go through your body. This is so important. That is why everyone must learn some form of relaxation. Meditation is an excellent one. It's a lovely way to manage stress. Next, hydrate yourself. You need to drink plenty water, especially during the this season. You need to drink plenty, plenty water. Plenty water to hydrate yourself, especially if you're drinking coffee and alcohol. For every glass of alcohol or shot of alcohol, you should be taking one glass of water because that will dilute out the effects of the alcohol. Remember, alcohol wipes out your bacteria just like they wipe out the bacteria on your hands. So if you consume too much alcohol, that will wipe out the bacteria in your gut. All the more you need to do what I just said before. So watch out with the alcohol. Replace those poor bugs. You don't want to keep killing those poor bugs, okay? Those bugs are working for you. The next thing is counteracting your metabolism, okay? Because you know you did this, the indiscretion was there, da 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 da. So what can, well, what else can you do? Another important thing is you could go outside into nature. So even though it's the holidays, if the sun's coming up and you have a few moments, go and get some sun rays. You must do that because that resets your circadian pattern. You're going to sleep better at night. You're going to get a lot of benefit just by going out into the sun at least 10 to 15 minutes a day. So get some sun. Don't stay indoors. Remember to go out. Next, biophilia. What does biophilia mean? That means you're inhaling all nature around you. So you go for a short walk in the park. Go for a short walk around my neighborhood. Inhale the neighborhood because all these trees and grasses, they release chemicals that go into you and they actually benefit you. It's called biophilia. That's how you feel good, actually. You don't just feel good because it's a mental process. You feel good because there's actually an interaction between your environment and you. This is real chemistry in action. Go, take care of it. Go to the seaside if you're over there. Go for a walk. Go walk on the, on the beach. Get into the water. Let the bacteria in salt water in the ocean get onto you. Even if you walk through it, get the magnesium through your skin. So get some, some, some contact with nature. Get clean air. Don't stay indoors. Breathe in. Nice clean air. Go outside. So get the sun and then you'll find that you'll even sleep better. So we talked about a lot of things here. Yes, it's important that your diet uh, is so important and you don't want to mess it up forever. But in a holiday season, you need to go out, have fun with your friends and your family and your loved ones. And you got to party. But if you just put some of this into it also, you will nullify the bad effects and you'll come out just wonderful. Look, look, holidays cause flu and other viruses. Holidays are a terrible time. It's very stressful. There's an epidemic of illnesses that occur around the holidays. You can counteract that because if you do all the things that I just said, your immune system will also benefit. Your immune system will benefit. Benefit. Your hormonal system will benefit. Your whole body will benefit.